In August 2021, the world watched in shock as the Taliban swept back into power in Afghanistan, unleashing a humanitarian crisis of unimaginable proportions. With millions of Afghans fleeing their homes, facing food shortages, economic instability, and unrelenting violence, the international community was left grappling with how to respond. But amidst the chaos, a controversial question emerged. Is Canada one of the world's leading democracies indirectly funding the Taliban? I'm here to unravel the intricate layers of this complex issue. Let's start with the basics. Since the Taliban's takeover, Canada, under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, has committed over $226 million in aid to Afghanistan. This funding is intended to support humanitarian efforts, including food distribution, medical supplies, and aid for refugees. The goal? To help the vulnerable populations suffering under the new regime. But the reality is much more complicated. Critics argue that any form of assistance could inadvertently legitimize the Taliban regime, or worse, be siphoned off by corrupt officials and end up in the wrong hands. Even though the Canadian government assures that the aid is being funneled through international organizations like the United Nations and the Red Cross, there's no guarantee it won't indirectly benefit the Taliban. The controversy lies in this delicate balance between providing aid and avoiding empowerment of a regime known for its oppressive practices. To understand the gravity of the situation, let's delve deeper into the history. The Taliban, notorious for their draconian interpretation of Sharia law, ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001. Their regime was marked by severe restrictions on women's rights, public executions, and the harboring of terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda. Fast forward to 2021, and the international community was rightfully concerned about a potential return to these dark days. So what does Canada do? The Trudeau government argues that Canada has a moral obligation to provide aid, and emphasizing that the funds are carefully managed to reach those in dire need. But the question remains, is it possible to help the Afghan people without indirectly supporting their oppressors? This dilemma isn't unique to Canada. It's a broader challenge faced by the entire international community. How do you provide humanitarian assistance in conflict zones without bolstering oppressive regimes? The answer requires a nuanced approach, one that balances alleviating human suffering with the need to avoid actions that could strengthen ideologies contrary to democratic values. Moving forward, Canada will need to continuously evaluate its approach, adapting strategies based on the evolving situation on the ground. This means closely monitoring the delivery of aid, engaging in diplomatic efforts to influence the Taliban's policies, and collaborating with international partners to address these multifaceted challenges. The stakes are high, the world is watching, and the question remains, in the quest to provide humanitarian aid, why is Canada inadvertently funding the Taliban? The truth is far from simple but it's a question that demands our attention. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more deep dives into global issues.